Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Allie. So today is my long-awaited summer video. I have 10 fragrances with me that I'm going to be wearing, I know, the most during summer 2020. These are fragrances that are very refreshing. They are bright. They are not overbearing. They aren't going to be cloying because in the summertime, with that summer heat, wearing fragrance can sometimes be a little tricky. I personally don't like choking people out in the summertime. I don't like choking myself out. I don't enjoy wearing very dense, heavy, syrupy fragrances in the summertime. I reserve those mostly for the winter time, but with summer, I feel like here I have 10 really cool options, all ranging from niche designer and indie. So I've got a little bit of everything for everyone out there. And yeah, I also want to say I am very sorry about last week. I didn't post at all last week. I was dealing with some really personal stuff and it didn't help that there were some trolls on the YouTube posting really mean things about me and it really got to me because I was in a really weird state of mind so I was feeling really down about myself and a combination of people posting crap and talking smack was really messing with my vibe and yeah I just needed a minute to recoup but I'm back I'm feeling good I feel better everything is okay and yeah I'm ready to talk fragrance with you guys and I'm really excited I had to go through this list like five different times because I constantly took things out and put things in and was constantly just changing, changing, changing it because there are so many options in my collection for summer. But I feel honestly that what I have here is gonna be my go-to for summer 2020 with my number one pick being my ultimate summer fragrance, what I know I'm gonna be wearing the most. So let's start with my number 10 pick and that is Forbidden Games by Killian. So Forbidden Games by Killian is an offering from the house of Killian. This one's got notes of peach, plum, it's got cinnamon, rose, geranium, oh god, it's so good, jasmine, vanilla, honey, and a poponax, I think is how it's pronounced, which is sort of like a resiny, balsamy uh, scent. And this is really, really nice. Off the cap, honestly, I get this sort of pencil shaving vibe, which is kind of funny. Like it smells like pencil shavings when you smell it off the cap. But when you spray it on, it is a really beautiful, clean scent. And I really do appreciate for what it is. You definitely get the apple note in the opening. It's very bright, it's very crisp. You get a little bit of that peach and definitely that plum because there is some sourness behind this fragrance. But I feel like the sourness pairs really well with the apple, making it smell sort of like a, a really sour green apple, which are some of my favorite kinds of apples. And I really like the combination of apple and plum and fragrances because it sort of gives off a very sour green apple feel to the fragrance. You've also got these beautiful florals in the background that really amp up the fragrance. So it's not just like a fruity fragrance it's very much floral and I do get the florals a little bit more than the fruits but the most out of the fruits the one I get the most is definitely the apple and it's really really nice it has this underlying sweetness and this almost smells like a really luxurious expensive shampoo and if you're into very clean shampoo type scents then I think that Forbidden Games is going to be a really really good option for you I honestly really enjoy it. I enjoy the House of Killian. I have a few different Killians. I might be doing another Killian video in the next couple of weeks, going through the range of the Good Girl Gone Bad fragrances to see which Good Girl Gone Bad is right for you because there are three out right now, the Eau Fresh, the Extreme, and the Original Good Girl. And I have two out of the three, but I might pick up the third just to do a video. But yeah, definitely a great option for summer. It's crisp, it's bright, it's clean. It's not at all going to choke anybody out. This is gonna smell like you just took a shower and you used a really expensive sort of like shampoo and you still smell of that sexy, sexy shampoo. It gives me Herbal Essence vibes but without smelling like Herbal Essence. Like if Herbal Essence was a scent and then it, there was a niche version of it, Forbidden Games would be the niche version of that. So yeah, definitely check this one out from the House of Killian, Forbidden Games. The next one that I'm gonna talk about was a really interesting one to my collection. I've had this one for quite a while now, and this is Chloe Nomad. So, uh, Chloe Nomad is really different from any of the offerings from the House of Chloe. 
there's not quite anything like Chloe Nomad. This is really, really different. It is a citrusy Sheepra scent, and Sheepra scents tend to have oak moss and very woody undertones to them. And this is a perfect beginner Sheepra fragrance for anyone who's ever been curious on trying a Sheepra fragrance. I know I've mentioned before uh, Nightingale from Zoologist as being a really good Sheepra, but it's definitely not one to try if you have never tried a Sheepra fragrance before because it's very much a Sheepra fragrance. This is like Sheepra for beginners and it is beautiful. You've got Mirabelle, Bergamot, Lemon, Orange, Freesia. You've got Peach, Rose, Oak Moss, um, Amberwood, Patchouli, Sandalwood. You've got White Musk. And it all combines to give you this really woody, sort of musky, very citrusy scent. It's really, really nice. It's really unique. It's so completely different from anything else that comes out from the House of Chloe. Normally, normally Chloe fragrances are really sweet, florally. This is a complete like 180 from everything that they've put out in the past. This is mature. It's but still young enough that like a young girl could wear it, but it gives off this sort of mature, like I have my life put together vibe, which I really do enjoy. Like I said, if you're really into citrusy scents with a really light underlying woody base, then this is a really, really great option for you to try. It is really beautiful. Citrusy, woody, stunning. It lasts forever on the skin, being that this is a citrus. This is one of the very few citruses that actually lasts on my skin and doesn't go away after like two, three, four hours. So I really do enjoy it. I get nice longevity from this one. Killian, I get about six to seven hours, which is really nice for during the day. And this one gives me at least eight hours. So perfect for summertime in my opinion. Not at all cloying, very, very beautiful. A gorgeous offering from the House of Chloe. The next one I'm gonna talk about is one that's been talked about so much on YouTube. I think everybody's talked about it. But I'm going to talk about it myself, and that is Flora Botanica from the House of Balenciaga. This is going to be perfect for the summertime. It's mint, rose, carnation, cannabis, vetiver, and amber. It's a very simple fragrance, but the composition of it is quite beautiful. I can say I don't think this would be that great for everyone. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's a very fresh, sort of aquatic-y smelling rose scent. It smells like it rained and you're smelling a wet rose. The mintiness adds a sort of wet feel to it that's kind of fresh and bright. I don't get a lot of the cannabis unless I'm smelling it from the cap. So you don't have to worry about wearing this and thinking, oh my gosh, am I gonna smell like the marijuana? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you're not gonna smell like it. If anything, the cannabis note in this adds a sort of peppery vibe to the rose fragrance because cannabis can smell a little green and a little peppery and it's just helping to amp up the rose note in the fragrance. So if you're into a sort of fresh, slightly peppery, aquatic-y rose fragrance with some freshness that's gonna help brighten your summer days, then I think that the House of Balenciaga's Flora Botanica is really gonna be up your alley. It's really nice, it's quite refreshing, it's nothing groundbreaking in my opinion, but for what it is, this is gonna be really, really good for summertime. And I can see why people really like it. Like, it's a good scent, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's anything groundbreaking, but I do find myself busting it out quite a lot in the summertime because it's a really good performer. I get at least eight hours on that one on the skin. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is a Sunkissed Hibiscus from the House of Nest Fragrances. Now this one is beautiful, and I've talked about it before in the past. I made a whole dedicated video to this fragrance in particular. If you are a fan of Replica's Beach Walk or you have ever smelt Replica's Beach Walk, you are gonna love this one. That one is very sunscreeny, um, beachy smelling, and this one is as well, but that one, the main player is uh, citrus notes, and the main player in this one is floral notes. So depending on what you like, I would say go and get Replica's Beach Walk if you're more into citruses. If you're more into florals, definitely check this one out. You've got notes of frangipani, coconut, orange blossom, gardenia, tuberose, and amber, and it makes the most beautiful, sensual, suntanny, 
sort of summery fragrance with this underlying fragrance, uh, fragrance, floral like nuance in it. And it's so, so pretty. It's florally, it reminds me of when I was younger and I spent time in Waikiki in Hawaii. This smells so much like being in Waikiki to me, just the smell of like suntan lotion everywhere. The florals as you're walking around the beach that they would line like around the sidewalks. So, so pretty. You definitely get the coconut adding that sort of suntan-y vibe to the fragrance that I really do enjoy. And it's just beautiful. This is gonna be great for summer, especially if you're into sort of beachy scents. Definitely check out Sunkissed Hibiscus from the House of Nest Fragrances. They have a lot of really great options, and that one is one of my personal favorites. And it was the newest release from this year, so go figure. But the next one that I'm gonna talk about is from the House of Creed, and this one is called Aqua Fiorentina. I've touched a little bit on this um, in my first video that I ever did for YouTube. This is stunning. This is light blue on steroids. So if you're a fan of Dolce & Gabbana's light blue and you wanted something that smelled extremely natural, this is your girl right here, Aqua Fiorentina from the House of Creed. Aside from the bottle being like stunning with these rose detailings, this scent has plum, it's got apple, it's got rose, it's got pear, you've got bergamot, you've got Sicilian bergamot in it as well. So two types of bergamot lemon cedar sandalwood white grapefruit like this scent is so so good where the star player in dolce and gabbana's light blue is a um is lemon sicilian lemon the star player in this is sicilian bergamot and the bergamot so it smells a bit more limey in my opinion than dolce and gabbana's light blue dolce and gabbana light blue smells more lemony this smells more limey both are stunning but this one smells way more natural and it actually is pretty long lasting on my skin being that it's such a fruity, fresh, citrusy fragrance. It's so, so beautiful. You definitely pick up on that plum and the apple in this as well. You definitely pick up that bergamot because it is a citrus bomb with that white grapefruit as well. And you have this beautiful underlying rosiness all throughout the fragrance that's just sort of always there. So you smell this beautiful, very light rose, but you smell all these citruses on top of it. And it's so, so pretty. And it sits on a really beautiful cedar and sandalwood base, which just adds depth to the fragrance. It's not a very complicated fragrance. It's very straightforward. It's so, so pretty. It's so ultra feminine. And this is just so addictive. If you can get your hands on this one from the House of Creed. Oh my gosh, is it gonna be right up your alley, especially if you are a fan of Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue or just citrus fragrances in the summertime in general. Definitely a standout option and I highly suggest you guys check that one out. Aqua Fiorentina from the House of Creed. The next one that I'm gonna talk about is one from the House of Chanel. And this one is Chanel Gabrielle Essence. So not the original Chanel Gabrielle, but the Essence. This is beautiful. I feel like where Chanel Gabrielle lacked, this totally encompasses everything that that one was lacking. I know Chanel Gabrielle got a lot of flack when it came out. People were like, it doesn't smell like a Chanel fragrance. It's such a departure from all the other Chanel fragrances. This is boring, this is blah, this is this and that. I feel like they did it justice when they came out with the Essence version. It smells a lot more like a Chanel fragrance. It's really beautiful when I spray this. I've gotten one of the weirdest compliments when I wore this was that I smelt like a vintage painting of those baskets with uh, fruits and flowers in them, those oil paintings. And I thought it was a really weird but beautiful compliment. And after they said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I totally can picture that with this fragrance. It's so beautiful. It's very elegant. It's very modern at the same time, but with sort of a vintagey feel. And it's really, really unique. You've got citrus notes, you've got pedigree, you've got black currant, you've got red fruits, peach, white flowers, like tuberose and jasmine, ylang ylang, you've got orange blossom, coconut, sandalwood, you've got musk and vanilla. Like this is so, so beautiful. And you definitely pick up the bright, crisp, fruit notes at the top and then all of a sudden you get a burst of just these beautiful florals and it's so so pretty 
I don't get a lot of the coconut in this. I'm sure it's in there, but it mixes really well with the sandalwood, musk, and vanilla that I almost don't really pick up a lot of it. But it's really, really beautiful, and it is such a stunning, elegant summer choice, especially if you're going to go out and you're going to dress up a little bit. Definitely check out Gabrielle Essence. It's so, so pretty, and it's heavy on the jasmine as well. And it's a very clean jasmine, so if you like clean scents, definitely check that one out because it is jasmine heavy, in my opinion, with some fruitiness in it. And yeah, it's really, really beautiful, and it's quite elegant, and I really do love that option. The next one I have is L'Empriatrice number three. I don't know if I said that wrong, but it's from D&G. Come on, focus, baby, focus. Uh, that's close enough. Either way, I'm going to link everything down below. But L'Empriatrice number three, probably butchering that. I don't speak the French. But this one's got pink pepper, kiwi, rhubarb, jasmine, um, watermelon, musk sandalwood and I think it's got like a lemon tree note as well which is kind of interesting kind of weird at the same time but this is stunning this is one that you can see I have dented quite a bit it takes a lot for me to dent a fragrance I really have to be into it and last year when I had this fragrance man was I into it like I was into this hard I couldn't stop wearing it it was my easiest grab and go fragrance it smells so good the star player in this bad boy is a watermelon note but it's a very ozonic, sort of aquatic watermelon, watermelon, watermelon note. And it's really, really beautiful. It smells like the juiciest, like ripe, super like slopping wet watermelon. Like you just took a bite of it and it was just like bursted in like one of those gushers. Like, my gosh, is this so, so pretty. That's mostly what I get from it. You sort of get this sort of citrusy vibe. There's a weird underlying like sort of greenness that's like super light. It's, I feel like a lot of people won't pick up on it. I pick up on this sort of slightly light greenness, but it's overshadowed by the sweetness and the juiciness of the watermelon. That kiwi helps aid in its freshness as well. The rhubarb adds this kind of sharp, but it's a very toned down sharp, like crispness to it. So, so pretty. It's sweet. It's watermelony. It's fresh. It's very girly. It's very playful. It's very beautiful and very worth checking out for summer 2020. Lots of people talk about it and for good reason. And you can get this online for a really good price. I think you can get a bottle of this for like $30. Um, I paid 80 for this one at TJ Maxx. Should have gone online and paid 30 on like Fragrance X because it's way cheaper on there. And I bought and quite a, I, I buy a lot on Fragrance X and like all over the internet. So definitely there are options out there aside from hunting them down in stores. And they are usually cheaper online than they are going in stores. Just saying. I love my TJ Maxx, but like sometimes I'm like, girl, I can find you for cheap online. Like, don't even play me like that. Don't make me pull up like Fragrance X and be like, excuse me, ma'am, can we mark this down? But besides the point. I'll link everything down below so y'all can all find it. The next one that I'm going to talk about is one that I had to do a whole dedicated video on it. It was so damn good. I was blown away when I smelled this and that is Proxima by Centauri Perfumes. Peter from Fragrance View created this scent himself. This is from his line of fragrances. His line is incredible but Proxima is by far my favorite one. All the notes in this one are synthetic. And because of that, the longevity on this is like out of this world. But not just that, this fragrance smells out of this world as well. It literally smells like you landed on an alien planet and you're taking a big like gulp of air, like gulp of air, we're not fish, a big deep like inhale of air from this alien planet and you are smelling that air and it smells so beautiful. You've got grapefruit, black currant, you've got wild berries, aldehydes, rose, air white woods iris musk like jasmine and there's a strawberry note in this that is like so so pretty and i pick up a lot on the strawberry note in this the iris in this sort of gives it like this underlying powderiness that sort of reminds me of the smarties candies and there's this airy note that sort of comes off to me as like fog and it's really interesting it's really unique it's got this beautiful grapefruit opening Oh my goodness and those berries in this like I said are just so prominent 
my fans of berries check this out it smells modern it smells futuristic it smells so so good and honestly this is probably his most crowd pleasing scent in his line so easily going to be a safe blind buy for a lot of people and this pulls a lot more feminine but it could definitely very well be unisex so definitely check this one out also i don't know if you can tell but like i've cracked into this bad boy pretty bad i'm about right here on this fragrance so that doesn't tell you that i use this quite a bit i don't know what does because i love this so beautiful, so effervescent, so airy, so otherworldly. It is definitely a little hidden gem. Check this one out and I love it. And like I said, longevity is killer. It's a fresh fragrance with longevity because it's all synthetic notes because it's from his modern line and his modern line in the blue bottles are all gonna be made with nothing but synthetic notes meaning that they're probably all going to be monsters as far as longevity goes because synthetic notes tend to last a lot longer on the skin that's just usually how it goes but the next one before i get to my honorary mention is one that i talked in my tokyo milk call this is from tokyo milk dark collection and this is la vie la morte and this is Stunning. If you are a fan of tuberose, my God, check this out. $44. I cannot believe this is $44. But this is one of my most worn um, scents in the summertime. It's white tuberose heavy, so you have to love white tuberose. It's got cardamom, hibiscus leaf, and jasmine. And it smells like the most natural, creamy, beautiful tuberose fragrance that's slightly green. It smells like you just broke it off at the stem and you can kind of smell the greenness from the stem and maybe it rained and there's like a little bit of water on the petals and you went and smelt it and like my gosh that's what this smells like and it is so dang good you guys it's just a pretty straightforward fragrance there's not a lot of change in it it's very linear but it's so so beautiful i cannot stress enough and for 44 dollars, what a steal i mean the bottles are beautiful the notes are on the back as well. The fragrance is beautiful and it's only 44 bucks. So my girls out there on a budget, definitely check out the Tokyo Milk line. Their fragrances are very affordable. And this one from their dark collection is definitely a standout in my opinion. I love this one enough to make it a full bottle like in my collection and I'm gonna get more of it as soon as it comes back in stock online unless they've already restocked it. But when I was on there two or three weeks ago it was out of stock so definitely check the website out margo elena did a great job when putting this one out it's one of my favorites from the line so definitely check it out especially if you are a fan of white tuberose beautiful white tuberose fragrance now the next one that i'm going to talk about has been my signature scent for summer for probably three or so years now i don't have a full size bottle of it and that's why this is my honorary mention because I've never been able to bring myself to buy it because of its longevity. And just in general, this brand has problems with longevity and it is from the house of Atelier Cologne and this one is Orange Sanguine. And this is stunning first off. There's a reason why this was my signature scent for summer for like three years straight. It is the most true to orange fragrance that I have ever smelt. It smells a little bitter, it smells juicy, it's fresh. To me, when I smell this, I picture a woman waking up in her beachfront home that sits on the side of a cliff and she has these beautiful, just like jasmine and geranium like bushes right outside like her balcony. And she opens up her like balcony to go outside and take a deep breath of air. And she's getting the salty breeze from the ocean she has her orange juice in hand and taking a sip while taking a breath of the florals and the air and just the juice and like oh my gosh that's what i get from this it's a little airy it's very citrusy it's very juicy there's a like slight underlying like floral tinge to it but it's not overtly floral definitely heavy on the citrus in this one and it is stunning I have never smelled a fragrance that smells so dang close to damn orange juice than I do with this one. And it is so, so great. 
The only problem with it is I have to reapply it multiple times a day when I do wear it. And I usually have to wear it for like three to four hours before I have to reapply. And for me, that's the only problem, but that might be good for people that don't want something that's gonna last all day. You want something that's gonna last for a few hours and then you can switch it up to something else. Then this is a really good option. It is stunning, but a lot of people don't talk about the longevity about this one. They'll hype it up and for good reason. It's unique, it's beautiful, it's stunning, but no one talks about the damn longevity like they're all embarrassed. The longevity on this sucks, but you cannot deny this is a stunning fragrance. So from the House of Atelier Cologne, Orange Sanguine, check it out if you're into citruses. This is the ultimate citrus fragrance in the world, in my opinion. There's reason people talk about it. I've been wearing it for a long time. It's got hype. Every year I smell this and it reinvigorates me. It reignites the passion and the love I had for this fragrance. It's one of those fragrances. it's addictive. You're gonna keep smelling it and you're gonna keep coming back to it more and more and more. So be forewarned, this is some good, good juice. Good, good stuff, you guys. Like I, I just can't with that one. I love it too much. Now my number one summer fragrance is one that is not talked about as much and I don't know why. Well, I do know why and I'm gonna get into why. But this is Meliora from Parfums de Marly and I know this is gonna be ugh, my go-to fragrance for summer 2020. My number one, my ultimate. These are all ultimate, but this is like Queen Supreme. She is gorgeous, she is good, she's amazing, she's mind-blowing. Everyone is obsessed with Delina and Delina Exclusive and they get so much hype that people forget about the rest of the range of the Parfum de Marly line, which I get. There's a lot of hype behind Delina. There's a lot of hype behind Delina Exclusive. They are both beautiful. I cannot deny that. But this is like the underrated, like no one I feel like talks about her as much. People sort of overlook her, but she is the real queen from that line of Parfums de Marly. This is the hidden gem from that line and this is stunning. And if more people got their nose on it, I feel like less people would be talking about Delina and Delina Exclusive because she is it. I'm here for her. This girl is me in the summertime. Oh my gosh. You've got red berries, cases, black currant, rose, lily of the valley, ylang ylang. You've got this gorgeous vanilla and musk in the base that is so beautiful. This opens up super bright, very berry-like. And it's sort of like, it's very fresh. It's very fresh and berry-like with this super sensual vanilla that all of the Parfum de Marly's women's fragrances are sort of known for. They all have this sort of underlying sensual vanilla that's so beautiful, so feminine, just really, really pretty. You've got that rose and that lily of the valley and ylang ylang that add this florally touch to the fragrance. And what I love about this, it's so bright, but it dries down to this sensual sort of musky vanilla and you never lose those red berries. They stay all throughout the wear of the fragrance. So, so juicy, so, so beautiful, so, so sensual, so, so sexy. This draws people in. When I've worn this to work, I've had compliments on it. I literally was at a meeting um, a couple weeks ago and like we're all sitting because we have to sit six feet apart and we are sitting in this warehouse like six feet apart and stuff. And we're having our summer meeting and well, the girl that was next to me like looked over and she's like, she we couldn't talk during the meeting, but she like looked over and she was like, and I was like, thanks. And just like, oh my gosh, like it projects and comes off the body beautifully. This will get you noticed. Delina gets you noticed. Delina exclusive gets you noticed, but girl, no, put those down. Get your nose on Meliora. She is a Stunning, and she is the hidden gem from Parfums de Marly. Once you get your nose on this, y'all can come and thank me later. Gorgeous fragrance and highly underrated from the house and I highly suggest you guys go check this one out. So that is my number one fragrance. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Um, it was hard for me getting this list together because I constantly was changing it and I was gonna do this last week, but with everything going on, I just couldn't get around to it. And then with the trolls messing with my mind spice, I was just not in the right state of mind to like dish out a video, but 
I'm back you guys and I'm here for it and I hope you guys enjoyed the video and yeah if you guys have any questions if you guys want to contact me I will link my Instagram down below feel free to shoot me a message all my info will be in the description box I will also link everything in the description box for these fragrances where you can find them and everything until next time you guys I hope like I said you enjoyed the video and that this helped as far as like y'all that are out there looking for summer fragrances Till next time, I will catch you guys later. Bye.